Well, my, what's going on you guys it's royce jacob welcome back to the channel and welcome back to waves weekly the series i post every sunday where we cover recent news and current events that i believe relate to the markets also you guys know what i'm thinking about the markets in general we'll take a look at a few charts and let you guys know what sectors and what stocks i'm looking forward to going into this trading week okay so as always we'll kick it off with the good old chart have the spx in front of us s p 500 good way to sum with the equity markets and we will actually take a look at this relief rally okay so if you guys happen to catch that that video i posted a few days ago talking about how this relief rally in the stock market was a bubble you might have noticed that i forgot to to cover this part to cover the actual relief rally okay i was so focused on the on the greater time frames that i forgot to zoom in and look at this so i will uh, make up for that today i'm gonna let you guys know why i have these lines drawn here and uh, what my more short-term analysis on the markets is um, if you guys did tune in or have tuned in for a while you would know that i think it's always foolish to to make short-term predictions but um it can't hurt to do so sometimes and i'll just let you guys know what i think always remember you guys this is just my opinion um the market's so wild right now none of us know what is actually going to play out okay so we'll kick it off with that we will then move on to some very sobering news um talking about a robin hood trader who's only 20 years old who actually commits suicide and um this is very sad super sad news but i feel like it's important to cover um it definitely falls in line with some of the content that i've been making lately focused around Robinhood traders, focused around this retail investor movement. And again, it's sad, but I feel like this is an important thing to cover and a, an important thing for you guys to all be aware of and just everyone to be aware of because the psychology aspect of this game of trading overall is, uh, is in my mind the most important aspect of it. And uh, we, will, we will cover this. I'll, I'll let you guys know a little, uh, some of the specifics about this, but I also just want to talk about, again, the psychological aspect of trading and why it's so important. Okay, so after that, we will move on to uh, another, some definitely not a sad news, but uh, disappointing. This is just kind of highlighting uh, the reality of how bad this market is. Um, in a sector that's obviously probably the hardest hit by this corona economy and this, uh, this pandemic and this uh, just crisis that we're going through, um, Carnival announced their earnings, so CCL announced earnings, um, and they only dipped 2%. That, I think, is the craziest part about this entire story, to be honest, is that the stock only dipped 2% after this catastrophic earnings call. So we will cover this. Um, we will then try, I, mean, I definitely want to lighten it up after this, but we will cover Spotify, who actually just signed a deal with Kim Kardashian and DC Comics, okay, two very recognizable names. Um, their Spotify is on an absolute tear lately. They just signed a deal with Joe Rogan not too long ago. So I want to cover this, let you guys know what I think about this, and just kind of about, about this industry as a whole um, moving forward, okay? So we'll cover that and then we will briefly cover this. I've been talking a lot a lot about this uh, just COVID crisis or COVID cases going up uh, as of late as all these states are reopening. So I will briefly touch on this because again, I have been talking about it um, kind of a lot lately in recent videos, but this is just more of a segue into the into the stocks that I wanna that I wanna turn you guys on to and the ones that I'm looking forward to going into next week, okay? So this is more of a segue, we'll, we'll lightly touch on this, but we will reach that when we come to it. All right, so let's get into this, but before we do that, I will ask you that if you go on to gain value from this video, that you please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. All right, so SPX, S&P 500 right in front of us. Again, I have, I can't believe I forgot to talk about this in that video. Um, I have, a, I had a few lines drawn. We'll look at that just to show you, just to recap if you didn't see them. Um, in that video, I did talk about that if we do see this uh, this secondary this second wave of this correction and another significant pullback in the markets, I do think that traditional equity markets will hit uh, some pretty significant levels. Worst case scenario would be a 50% pullback, uh, but I think a 30% pullback from where it's currently at uh, to around 2,000 to 2,100. So you know, 25, 30% pullback is very reasonable, which would actually be lower than uh, this, just a little lower than uh, this flash crash that we saw back in March. Okay, but I'm not gonna rant on that anymore. Let's look at this time frame. okay? So these two lines here uh, drawn, I'm sure you know what these are already. These are just very basic trend lines, okay? And these have been used as lines of support. Um, in the SPY, there's probably similar, there's definitely similar lines like this and similar trends like this in uh, all tra traditional markets. So NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Russell 2000. Um, but again, we're just looking at the SPY and these two lines are drawn here um, because the, the significant part about this is that it is currently sitting between these two lines of support 
that they have been dancing around for the past few months okay again since this march flash crash um, they have been uh, slowly but surely trending upwards and using these two lines as a line of support okay so this line on the bottom the reason i have two um, a lot of times you'll only see one you only need one a lot of the time um, this one on the bottom some people this is what a lot of people draw so ultimate low ultimate low here and um it actually has been using this as a line of support after like as it's bounced over the past week or so so that this is the line a lot of traders are using but me personally i like to um if you guys have seen see me draw draw trend lines before you would know that i like to kind of average it out so um, again i don't want to this this a lot of times the ultimate lows and like the ultimate highs as well um, this goes vice versa um, are kind of you know you know like these are these are this was a catastrophic event a lot of times i don't like to take uh, some bubbly behavior or, or behavior that is too almost highly volatile in a into consideration because again that's just kind of erratic emotional behavior especially like again the ultimate lows ultimate highs so that's why i like to kind of average it out i think this low this low makes a lot more sense and again it did dance around this area a lot and use this as the line of support um, around here okay where it was pretty steadily climbing climbing up so if I was to only choose one of these two lines to base uh, base my kind of just analysis on or um, just general trend direction on, it would be this one. And the point of that, like the main point of this is that I am bearish on the SPY, SPX. And again, I'm sure this applies to Dow Jones, NASDAQ, whatever chart you're looking at. Um, as long as it's below this, then I am bearish, okay? If it does happen to break above this and begin to use this line as a as support once again, then, um, my mind might be changed from a technical perspective but you guys know i always prioritize fundamentals over technicals so i do think that um, the fundamentals are absolutely tragic right now they are trash and um, now that the technicals now that it has broken this trend line um, and it will it might next week what could happen is it, it will use this as resistance so it might bounce back up to this area so it might try to retest this high and double top but i do think after that um, if that does happen i personally don't think it will i think next week is going to be pretty bloody if i'm going to be honest but um, if it does go up i can see it retesting that line one more time before coming back down but i do think ultimately it will come back down and uh, like i said before it's i think we have not all uh, shouldn't have done all the time but i do think that we will likely come back down to um, kind of this area right here where we spent a lot of time in around 2015. Okay, so it's crazy to think that this is just five years ago that uh, we're like this bounce, which seems super catastrophic, was still uh, not at the levels that we were at, like the highs in 2015, okay? And the economy, again, economy, stock market, evidently two very different things right now. But um, I mean, the economy is, for sure way shittier than it was back in 2015 okay so i do expect another move down there is a lot of areas around around here where i do think it could bounce so i wouldn't be <clears throat> excuse me i don't be surprised if it came to like this area like 2870 area bounced again i don't think it's going to be a like a straight shot down um, nothing ever is there is volatility in this market there's still a lot of volume and traders in this market so it's not going to be a straight shot down but i think we have uh, begun begun the second wave of this correction and we will see a steady move down over the coming weeks all right and again summer is uh, summers are traditionally bad for general equity markets um, just historically not always but but most of the time summers are the worst months for general equity markets so just keep that in mind that's just kind of another uh, insult to injury at this point all right so that's my take on general markets again we'll get into some more specific stocks later on but let's cover let's cover this super sad piece of news all right so title cnbc article robin hood increases guard rails on options trading in the wake of a customer suicide i'm just gonna read you the key points you guys can check out this article um, as a whole if if you want to again let's just type this in you'll find it um, key points robin hood is making multiple changes to its platform including making it more difficult to access to more difficult to access its options offering in the wake of a customer's death last week on Friday, 20-year-old Alex Cairns, a Robinhood customer, died by suicide and a note to his family cited $730,000 losses on the trading platform. It is, not it's, it is not lost upon us that our company and our service has become synonymous with retail investing in America and that this has led to millions of new investors making their first new investments on, through Robinhood CEO says. Okay, so again, I don't want to dig too deep into this. 
but to sum it up, uh, this kid pretty much was trading, uh, options trading. Obviously, you guys know that's what I do. I do talk about options trading a lot on the channel. Um, it does come with rewards if you play it correctly, if you play it well, if you play it smart. But it's also risky. It's w super risky because you can lose all your money if, uh, I mean, if you're a new trader. And I, I, no one can blame this kid. No one can blame any new retail investors that are entering the space trying to learn. Um, there's so many shiny objects in the market right now. And that's the dangerous part of it too. You get you get these kids and and this uh, this kid, 20 years old, this young man, was was investing with I guess sixteen thousand dollars, which is his life savings. Um, and you know that's your life savings for this kid, 16 16 k is that's your that, exact. It's his life savings. He worked hard for that money. And um, if you're trading on Robinhood again, there's especially in this market, um, as of, as of the past couple of months, there's been so many shiny objects. So many people think these stocks will just keep climbing. That's like the joke that I talked about in the market bubble. Like, uh, it was a joke that stocks only go up. The Davy Day Trader movement, stocks only go up. Um, but now that's it's, it's almost becoming common like general consensus and the common way of thinking that stocks will actually do only go up. Okay and that's dangerous and i guess this kid just uh, he played he just played his cards wrong sadly and this the reason that he he thought he lost he thought he owed seven hundred thirty thousand dollars okay so obviously if you're playing with sixteen thousand dollars you can't be down seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars okay so it was a glitch in robin hood this is actually a huge fault on robin hood's part because this is a glitch in their system that ultimately caused this kid to take his own life and that is tragic i don't know uh, i mean robin hood is definitely going to catch a case for this they're definitely going to get sued over this this is tragic but again like this i kind of just want to wrap this in like i said before um, in the intro to how important just the psychology like the psychological aspect of trading is okay like i've been in this game for a long time um at this point, the money I'm playing with and the money I'm trading, especially options at this point, is money that um, if I do lose, I'm bumped. And when I do lose, I'm bumped, okay? Because I, I work very hard um, on the research, on the due, due diligence that I do um, to make sure that I that I make the most efficient and lucrative plays that I possibly can. So when I lose, it sucks. Um, but I've been in, in this game for not, not a super long time, but, but years and years now, okay? And um, I have been weathered. Over the years, you do develop a stronger stomach. You develop that um, that appetite for risk, and you develop the ability to handle the losses. Okay, and that is the most important thing, you guys. Like, the younger you are, like it, it's like anything else. Literally anything else you do in life, no one no one is good right off the bat. Okay, you like especially in this game, you can get lucky, and a lot of kids have been getting lucky. A lot of new investors have been getting lucky right off the rip, obviously because the past couple months stocks only go up, but it sucks to lose. And no matter how, again, no matter how much of a veteran you are, no matter how much time you spend in this game, the losses always suck. But it, it does get easier over time. And it's just so important to develop mental resilience and to be mindful of that, okay? I know it's easy to just say, okay, go develop mental resilience and go develop a strong will and a strong stomach that can weather um, the bloody days. But it really just takes time in the game. Like, and, and it takes playing smart. Play with money. Never play with money that you can't afford to lose. And unfortunately, in this kid's case, um, if he if he just knew that he lost his 16K, I'm sure he wouldn't have taken his life. But because Robin had fucked up and they, they their system glitched out and said, and this this poor kid thought he owed Robin Hood or owed whoever, I, I don't know who, I assume he thought he owed Robin Hood over $730,000. That is, I mean, he doesn't know. a lot, of, And that's the danger of these, like, you're just it's it's it, it is gambling a lot of the retail investor movement the robin hood day trader movement right now is gambling it's not investing it's speculative gambling these uh, a lot of these people have no idea and um no insight into the financial markets and so just financials in general it's it's more like walking into a casino that's kind of what the option uh, like especially robin hood options trading right now it's pretty much a casino okay so uh, to sum this up this is sad i don't want to i kind of want to uh move on from this right now again you guys can check this out if you want to but you guys just play safe out there do your best to just keep a rational mind and um if this does happen to you know that you cannot lose more money than you are investing okay so if you're betting with ten thousand dollars and robin hood glitches out and, and says that you owe them uh, more than ten thousand dollars that's not true keep a level head contact robin hood 
because that is not the case. And they fucked up huge in this scenario. Super sad. Let's move on from this. Um, Carnival earnings. <laughs> this is so insane that that Carnival Cruise Lines stock dips 2% on the loss of billions of dollars. All right. So I'll read this for you guys. Just going to kind of read the key points again here. Carnival CCL earnings for the cruise company's fiscal second quarter of 2020 have CCL stock dipping lower on Thursday. That's due to its adjusted losses per share of $3.30, missing Wall Street's estimate of $1.65. Okay, so they missed they 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 missed earnings, okay, of over 100%, okay? So over 2x. Its revenue of $700 million is also well below the analyst estimates of $1.3 billion. All right, so they disappointed super significantly. And uh, here's what else went wrong for Carnival during its most earn recent earnings report. Uh, again, adjusted share per losses are massively down, obviously. Revenue for the quarter comes down 85%, um, lower than the $4.8 billion last year. So that's very obvious. Again, the travel industry, the hospitality industry, obviously the hardest hit from this uh, coronavirus cri crisis. Um, so it's not surprising at all. Business is down about 85%. That sounds right. Um, Carnival earnings also have reported net loss of $4.4 billion. All right, so I think Carnival is worth uh, maybe $20 billion. So $4.4 billion, they lost, they burnt that. That is money uh, gone into the ether. Okay, and that is like 20% of their entire market cap. And the stock is only down 2%. That, that, like this is exactly what, what this is, this perfectly highlights the, just how wild the, the gap between the economy and the markets currently is, okay? They lost $4.4 billion or 20% of their, of their market cap in one quarter. So in just a, f a few months, they lost that much money. And obviously, again, this is about a black swan event, whatever you want to call it. But they burned that much cash and their stock is only down 2%. All right. It did end up falling a little later in the day. But on that news, the stock only fell 2%, which just shows the absolute like numbness to the economy by a lot of these retail investors. And again, this is this sector. If you watched uh, that analysis I did of the travel sector, then like this is this this and Hertz like Hertz is the poster child for Robin Hood. Uh, like Robinhood day traders favorite stock okay like Robinhood traders retail investors single-handedly like shot hurts up over two times over a hundred percent in a single day okay and again this just shows the disconnect between the economy and the stock market this plays into my fundamental fundamental argument on why the bubble just popped because this is just not sustainable it makes sense why it works again this this retail investor movement all this new money flooding into the market into just kind of wild card stocks again it's gambling that on top of the fed printing trillions of dollars giving it to these hedge funds uh kind of stimulating the economy and, and literally injecting it straight into the market into us us equities and us companies it makes sense why this market's afloat but just there's there and and i will gladly gladly accept uh, except like take the L accept my loss uh, in this argument if they are able to maintain this and keep the market steadily moving up because at this point obviously the again the markets and the economy are completely disconnected so I'm not ruling it completely out of the out of the possibilities it is still uh, a possibility that the markets continue on the track they're on but I just can't I just can't believe just from a common sense rational perspective that the markets will be able to continue this without some sort of like this will pay like they will this will have to pay like the actions that are being taken right now and just the current situation we're in cannot come without like without a devastating toll you know okay so i i this is kind of one of the one of the industries i, w I do want to watch next week they ended uh, on friday the majority of the travel industry again carnival hurts like airlines everything hospitality hotels all ended significantly red on Friday. I think down like 5% was probably the average from what just um, off the top of my head, what I remember seeing. So it will be interesting to see what happens next week with this. I have to imagine it's going to be bloody. Um, Cause again, I just don't think, I know I, I didn't articulate that, that last bit really well, but it's just so crazy to me how disconnected the economy and the markets is. And I just feel like it has to catch up at some point. There's no way it doesn't in my mind. Okay. So let's, uh, Got to move up. This is cool news. Okay, so Spotify again on an absolute tear lately. Spotify surges nearly 15% to an all-time high after signing uh, signing Kim K and DC Comics exclusive podcast deals. All right, so Spotify signed Kim K for an exclusive criminal justice podcast deal. You know she's uh, 
if you know anything about Kim Kardashian, you know that's like from a political perspective, she was doing a lot of good things in that in that um, space, and that's awesome. I do commend her for that. She's doing good things, and that is uh, she is using her platform for good, and I do respect that. I don't care what you guys think about Kim K from uh, any other angle, but she is doing good in that space. So give her props for that at least. All right. So on Thursday, the company announced a new partnership with DC and Warner Brothers as well to exclusively produce and distribute an original slate of narrative scripted podcasts. So this is a great idea. Uh, this is great not only for for Spotify, but for podcasts as well. Okay, and Spotify. The biggest thing about Spotify and what I think I commend them for doing really well is getting on this podcast bandwagon. Okay, so podcasts. Um, obviously, at, at this point in time, everyone knows about podcast, but as far as like a huge, large mega cap company um, actually capitalizing on it and trying to control the market, they're almost developing a monopoly or that's what they're trying to do. And that's very smart from a business perspective. They're trying to monopolize the podcast game. And that is brilliant because voice, um, I've been saying this for a long time, voice is the next frontier. Um, Voice, it's passive. Like you can be working, you can be taking a walk, you can be working out, um, all while listening to a podcast. Okay, it's similar to music, but it's more productive. Once you start, if you guys don't listen to podcasts, I'd highly recommend doing it. Once you start listening to podcasts, you look back on uh, your days of listening to music, and you're like, "Why did I do that?" While I could be learning and spending my time productively. Um, so again, I think I definitely commend Spotify for capitalizing on podcasts, especially right now in this Corona economy when everyone's locked at home. They definitely capitalized on this. They they. They took the shot, and I think they're succeed. They will succeed. And again, the stock uh, share surge 15%. We will take a look at Spotify real quick. Uh, you know, what, let's just do that now. Why not? Um, Spotify. What is it? Spotify. So yeah, they saw. This is a weekly. Let's just go to the daily to make it a little easier. So yeah, they gapped up on Friday. Um, and again, they've just been on a tear for the past couple of months, and it makes sense. Again, they, they do cap a lot of the music voice. I know ad revenue was significantly down earlier um, earlier in this crisis, but it is definitely picking up because uh, a lot of a lot of advertisers now are realizing the power of these platforms and the numbers they do. Um, they're signing these huge names again. Kim K, like she's obviously not as big as as Rogan in terms of people who value her opinion and uh, what she says. She's probably more famous on like a global, very uh, shallow scale, but. Um, there's no way her deal was worth as much as Rogan's. Again, Rogan probably has the most um, the the most valuable audience and the most capped. Like his podcast is three hours. I imagine his average watch time is at least like at least an hour, and that's insane. So that means you have an audience who cares. People value his opinion highly. Um, so it it would make sense that Kim K's deal is not worth nearly as much as Rogan. Like Rogan is probably the Rogan is the face. He's the godfather of podcasting. But again, Spotify making the right plays. It will be interesting to wrap this up into the entire sector to see how, how um, companies like Apple, like Apple blew it in this case. The fact that Apple didn't jump on, like they had the podcast app. They they started, they originated podcast. And it's crazy that they, they didn't try to capitalize on podcast. It, like while they had it, they had the shot. They have, they're sitting on like the strongest balance sheet, the biggest cash pile of any company in the world. And they're being beaten out by Spotify, which is about a $50 billion company, all right? Apple at this point is what, like $1.4 trillion or something crazy? Maybe not that much, but um, it's been a while since I looked at just Apple. I don't trade Apple much. Obviously, love Apple, but um, Apple, trillion dollar plus company. And it's crazy that they didn't use their their fat stacks of cash to capitalize on the on the podcast movement. And they will regret it for sure. But again, Spotify, it's get like Shopify is another player that kind of that falls like a uh, you know, $40 billion Shopify recently signed a deal with Walmart to partner with Walmart and like contract uh, smaller seller, sellers to individually sell on Walmart. So a lot of companies like this that are doing great things, Spotify, both and Shopify, the example I just used, are very highly valued right now. And to kind of wrap this around, like because I do feel like the general equity markets are, uh, are going to take a turn down, I feel like there's no way that Spotify and uh, companies like Shopify don't see a little bit of blood if the general equity markets fall just because again they are they are equities and when when the S&P when the Dow falls significantly when all stocks fall like everything goes down kind of like what we saw in March I don't think it's going to be as drastic especially because there's less panic and a little more understanding out there now but um, I do think that if the general equity markets fall companies like Spotify and Shopify can especially considering they're at all they're like far past all-time highs um, will definitely see a retraction Okay, so 
let's move on to again u.s reports 30,000 daily coronavirus cases highest number since may i don't even want to like read the key points even like the headlines enough again i've been talking about this kind of a lot lately but this was to be expected 100 uh, percent like places are starting to open back up the u.s is starting to open back up which is necessary it had to open back up at some time um I know many of you, I don't want to say many of you, but there's definitely people out there who, who question the validity and the, the heaviness, the gravity of coronavirus um, to each their own. I'm not trying to put any idea or, or any belief system into your head. Um, so whatever you believe, great. But the reality is that the numbers are going up. This is bad. This virus has uh, factually killed a lot of people. It Even if you are younger, you think you, you, you feel a sense of resilience. Um, Maybe you haven't had a loved one die to this virus like a lot of people who do understand the gravity of it um, have. Um, it is, this is very real. And the numbers are going up. That is, like I said, to be expected. It, it is very evident that this was going to happen. It wasn't just going to disappear. It's only been a few months. But um, that said, I, I for sure don't think the, the country will go back on lockdown. Americans are too strong a people. They're too resilient. They're too... Uh, foolish in a sense but that is the strength of the american will all right and that said again i don't want to go too too deep into this but that segues into my stocks to watch next week okay which as i'm sure you imagine are covid related so we're going to look at some good old covid related biotech stocks um, moderna novio novavax astrazeneca sorrento um uh, by Bi biontech I haven't even looked at this. I added it to my watch list, but I don't even know why I read that out just now. But coronavirus vaccines. And again, I've said this a lot, you guys. Like the more, the more the, these in the past, not always, because I have been proven wrong when I said this before, but the majority of the time, these act as a hedge to the markets, which means that if general equity markets fall, then these stocks tend to do well. Okay. Because again, there's so much retail money out there right now. When, when stocks fall, when your position's falling, a lot of this new money, a lot of this uneducated, or like just a lot of this money that wants to make money, which obviously I get it. But if if general markets fall and all these retail investors flood out of these stocks, they're still going to want to try to make money. All right. That's the game we're playing. And if they exit their positions in general equities and, and like tech companies, whatnot, um, then I do think that they will flood into this sector again because numbers are going up. They're going to want a place to put their money uh, while everything else is falling. And I think that definitely has the potential to send this sector flying again. Go for the second wave. Um, again, Moderna, a lot of these companies have been facing some legal hurdles, some, um, some criticism. And a vaccine, to be completely honest, I, like, no, one, no one knows at this point when a vaccine is coming. It could never come. That's the reality of it. I think it uh, almost for a fact will at some point. Um, again, I think this will happen faster. This vaccine will happen significantly faster than any other vaccine in history. Just uh, technology is better. There's m far more resources being put into the development of this vaccine and treatments for the coronavirus than um, probably anything ever just because of the damage um, that it's caused to the entire global economy. So there's more resources, there's more manpower being put into the development of the vaccine and treatments. Um, so I do think it will happen faster. I don't think it will happen a month, two months from now. It, could, it will be months from now, maybe years, who knows again. But um, that's almost, that's not irrelevant, but you know, like it's, it's the hope, it's the optimism around a vaccine. And it's great to be optimistic and people need that optimism. Um, and again, I think, especially with obviously coronavirus cases going up it will drive attention back to to the life saving the world saving literally like the save the world stocks that these biotech companies are that are trying to find solutions for COVID 19. okay so that said from a technical uh, technical perspective these are all looking great too uh, moderna is beautifully dancing on this line of support and uh, there is a solid amount of volume um, i'm not going to get into rsi but i i do think moderna can probably at least retest $75. I've said that many times just because that's where they issued their secondary offering. So I do think Moderna can hit at least $75. Uh, Novavax, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Perfectly broke out of the bull flag. Super bullish on Novavax right now. Go check out the video, the Novavax analysis and why I'm bullish that I posted uh, two days ago or something. Uh, pretty recently. It's my last uh, my last should you buy why I'm bullish uh, video. So check that out if you want to hear my full analysis of Novavax. Super bullish on them. AstraZeneca, obviously good. And Novio, um, 
again, especially in Novio, Novavax, companies that are only worth two, three billion dollars, uh, it doesn't take much capital to be put into these stocks to to send the share prices absolutely to the moon. Even Moderna sitting at like twenty billion dollars, um, it, it's significantly bigger than Novio, Novavax, but that's still in the grand scheme of things a fairly small company. Okay, so that uh, Sorrento. Um, We'll, t we'll take a quick look at Sorrento. Sorrento is a crazy looking chart, but again, I, sectors, sectors move in unison a lot of the times, especially like biotech and stuff. So I think if one of these guys does, does good, even though they're competitors, just as a matter of fact of people seeing the sector doing well and wanting to get in on the next big thing, they will hop into other companies within the space. All right. So we will call it there, guys. Again, that's uh, to, to just sum it up again, COVID, COVID related biotech stocks is what I'm really keeping an eye on next week and the travel industry, just because I think the travel industry is going to be super bloody. I have some put options on those, some call options on um, on this biotech sector. If you guys do want to know which exact positions I have, you can feel free to check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter. First link down in the description, exactly as it states, it is a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio, call options, put options, stock positions, and career cryptocurrencies and i do send out a newsletter every trading day talking about the trades i made that day which ones i'm entering which ones i'm exiting why i'm doing so why i'm making the decisions i'm making just rationalizing my thought process and giving you guys more real-time um, updates on the markets okay a lot of times i post these video way late in the day i do live in hawaii but i send those out during market hours so you get again a real-time uh, idea of what i'm doing in the markets while they're actually open all right so check that out i do appreciate that uh, drop a comment down below if uh, anything else exciting happened this week that i forgot to mention um, let me know what you think about these this stuff this was a this is a very important article in my mind i do recommend you guys go read this and uh, really just play safe out there guys i can't recommend that enough like uh, while there's so much volatility, like this is a scary market even to me as a somewhat of a seasoned uh, trader and investor this is a scary market uh, there is the potential out there to lose a lot of money, especially right now. That's why I'm so scared. Um, I know like I'll profit if the market falls right now, I profit. But it is super sad to know that a lot of kids, kids and new investors could potentially get absolutely wiped out if the market tanks again. All right. So just be careful out there. You guys do your research, just study up, keep a strong mind. I know it's hard to sometimes, but just know that it's not the end of the world. Um, once you get it, you guys like once you get it, it's hard. Again, like anything you do, you're going to suck at it. Everyone sucked at it. Everyone sucks when they first start something. So don't get down on yourself. Even if you're spending hours upon hours a day researching stuff, don't expect to catch on um, immediately. You can catch on quick. Um, obviously, educating yourself with the videos. Uh, I like to think my videos and other videos, books, whatever you're watching, um, can expedite the learning curve. But just understand that like repetition and like getting your reps in, just trial and error, is the greatest future of all so just keep at it um, keep a strong mind know that this is a very long game this is a, literally a game you play for life so don't get too down on yourself for for fucking up right now but um yeah i think that's a good place to call guys again appreciate you guys love you guys until next time always remember take action make waves in this world peace